The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Miles and Chapman. Yeah, let me just show you something here with the uh, E million. This is the 10 minute chart. A long rectangle formation, which has been going on since 1 a.m. this morning between 44.04 and 43, about 91, 92. Just continuing, continuing. It went to peak A, peak B. Oops, I should have put that. Yeah, peak A, peak B, peak C fails. So it's a brand new peak, A, peak, B, peak, C. What do we expect in the Chapman Wave methodology? If the technicals are strong enough, there should be a D. And then you've got to be careful. So here we are in leg D in the 10-minute chart. The target, I had said, if we were able to pierce the 44, 44.04, 44.06 resistance level, should be uh, this morning. I'm not saying in the next 10 minutes. I'm saying this morning should be that 44.11 uh, or 44.12. 200 period exponential moving average. Look at the way it was perfect resistance at that peak D right there, the fourth highest peak in the Chapman wave with the doji candle at 220 yesterday at 44, 30.75. It hit it. This is a very long term in the 10 minute chart. Remember, long term is, is, is an hour or two or three. Um, and it, it, the 200 period moving average has continued to, continued to decline. It should start to flatten out a little later on, and maybe, just maybe this afternoon, we'll see a little bit of power to, to have a stronger move to the upside. Most importantly, uh, I'm going to show you something that I think is, this is what I've been looking at and talking about with subscribers to my opening call uh, for about uh, four or five sessions now. And I've been saying, within the context of the moving averages that I look at, and I consider it to be extremely important. That's the nine period and the 14 period moving averages. When there's a really wide difference between a differential between the, the green nine EMA and the 14, and you've already gotten to a peak D, what it says is there should be upside action unless there is very strong, big triple digit down days consistency. Well, it turns out that the reversal from the 34,588 high of the 16th, I'm going to put that date in now because I didn't put it in before because it wasn't as important. Now it is important. Six, oh, what did I say? The 14th or the 16th? I think I said the 16th. I'll call it the 16th for now. Um, so with the 16th high, what we're looking at is, that was Friday, and a, re and a reversal to the downside the same day, giving you a Chapman wave inverted Roman red Roman candle. That's it. If there are two closes underneath the low of that session out of three sessions, that's negative. Well, the following session that was on Monday, we get ourselves a second Chapman wave Roman candle. I've got it written in over here. You can see a little bit better. Uh, this is a Chapman wave Roman candle, peak D, and this is the daily chart. Chapman wave Roman candle right there. And that, that rule of thumb is the same. This one's also a red Roman candle, except the difference is that this was a perfect one in the sense that it came off a high and it had um, just a tiny little wick at the top, big plunge to the downside, and then closed halfway to three quarters of the way off the low. And the rule of thumb is if the very next session or within two sessions, there is a trade in a shorter time frame that goes halfway into the wick, you've got to be careful because there's a good chance you're going to take out the low of that session. Well, we did that. That was yesterday. And today you can see we are trying to form a green candle with a 14-period moving average. You can see it a little clearer here. There's Chapman Wave automated, Chapman Wave resistance. Look at that, 34,580, 34,550. And what was the price? 34,588. And here you've got support that didn't hold in the 120-minute chart from the peak F top at 33,961, well, we've gone to a leg B to the downside. Now it's a leg, a trough B, and now it's a leg C in the 120-minute chart. And you can see that we are attempting to finally have a move up. Now, I want you to spend just a moment on that as I did 
um, yesterday and the day before. I want to explain why over the period of all the uh, just not hundreds, but thousands and thousands of um, either, either looking at the charts or trading the charts or notating the charts, why I've said that that nine period moving average so strong above the 14 should have a very good bounce. And then I'm looking for a potential H formation. And then we come back to retest this low. And that's going to be the big clue. But the weekly chart is saying sideways consolidation is most likely. So I am anticipating there's a pop to the 44.11, 44.12 level. Oh, let me just see. Right here. Give you a good, oh, good two-click session. Uh, unless you got stopped out because you had a very tight stop. Uh, but this is a, this is the way it is. And there it is right there. As we're doing it live, yes, your leg D. We're missing that leg D in the one minute chart. There it is, leg D. And the rule of thumb with a narrow rectangle is it takes a long time for it to resolve. If it can finally make the base um, of the rectangle a propellant and take out sharply the resistance level, then you go to the next highest peak. And here we are. Nice move up. That was finally up 29. That's what we'd be anticipating. So uh, all of that I did live right now just to show you how these things work in real time. Most importantly, um, what we are looking at is a bounce. Where would the bounce go to? Well, that is the big question because the MACD is still good. The stochastic is starting to weaken now. It's under 80%, it's 74%. The on-balance volume, the blue line, the daily is really weak. The relative strength has turned down. The weekly chart is holding very nicely at 82% in the stochastic and flat. That's important. MACD is flat but positive. And the nine period, it's just, it's not barely, it's somewhat positive. So that just gives you this whole panoply of this chessboard of looking at all the positions and how does it work. And now let me show you the S&P because it's a little bit, it's not quite the same. It's similar. But here you've got the nine period moving average. <clears throat> way above, even higher than the black 14 period moving average. That's number one. Number two is you've got a leg E that could be a peak E if by tomorrow at four o'clock, we don't take out the 44, 48.47 high of Friday. A day's young, anything can happen. We're at 43.70. That's 70 points, 700 down points. I, I can't see that happening right now. I think we're going to stall under it. And then what we will do is the pattern that I always talk about if I can just find it right here, is the dreaded H. And that's going to be the, the the template of what we're looking at over the next week or two. And what does that say? It says that sometimes you go straight up and then you come down. But when you come down, it comes down quite sharply. And then it bounces at a peak A or a B, the first or second highest peak after that left side low. It makes an arch formation. And if it tests and takes it out, the left side low, it can go quite a bit lower. If it holds, it can rally to the arch high. And if it doesn't take it out at all, you can go all the way back to the previous high. So that's the pattern we're looking at. And it's going to be a mix of that and the green cup formation or the reverse Y. So all that said, where are we right now? We're trading at 44.15 in the E-mini. That's really good. Uh, in terms of dating action, the obliterate that. Okay, very nice action. A new leg E in the temperature. Okay. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, someone, uh, someone just asked me, would I do the same analysis with Apple? So I had this done with Apple before. I spoke about this long rectangle. What happens if it takes out the, the base of the long rectangle? We've got to be careful. Could do a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. So Apple at 11 a.m. yesterday. Is that yesterday? Yep. 11 a.m. goes to about 182.30 or so. And then it starts to move up. It goes peak A. Same technique. Nothing here fancy. A, B. C, always counting the peaks. I've got to make sure I don't like to do these things with when the price is up in the triple look or four digits because you're looking for one penny difference. Well, 184.85 was in the 10 minute chart at uh, two, two o'clock yesterday and 65, 65, 64. That's what I was looking at. That's why I stopped because after you do this th hundreds and hundreds of thousands of times, you get to be able to tell a penny difference, uh, but you've always got to check. So this is peak ED, and then E pulls back very sharply, and it pulls back so the technicals all faded. So you have no choice. You have to put a down arrow, and this could be an alternate count, F slash G, but because the technicals are so strong, this is a brand new 10-minute buy mode, and, and that says the target is now a little bit late to the um, bar symmetry, that is the high that was made right here at 12.50 yesterday. Uh, that was on the 20th. On the 20th at uh, 186.09, and the low that was made right here, uh, double bottom at 182.60, 182.59. That's the one I chose, the one on the right. And that left side, right side price time match says that it should get to the 186.09 level by 10.10 today. Well, it's now 10.20. So it's a bar late. And it got to 185. Huh, 185.72. What about 30 cents or so, 35, 34, 36 cents away? Um, yeah, very nice, huh? So I am calling this a leg B. It could be an alternate count. I don't see any reason that stochastic's flat. 
the, the MACD is good. So you can use this technique in any time frame. And the reason I say that is because we're talking fractals. In other words, the same methodology, the same mechanism, the same aperture, the same everything that we're looking at in a one minute or a 10 minute or a monthly or a yearly, all the components are pretty much the same. So it should work. So this missed by a fraction, but the, the pattern was the same. Now, what I would have done, I didn't have time for that, is I would have taken a particular candle on the left, and I would have chosen that as the starting point for a chap wave inside wedge target repellent line. And there's the line. So it, it kept missing, just getting to it. But I, I love the action in Apple right now. There's a 10-minute chart I'm talking about. And this says that it should go higher and my target would be in the 186.40 area. That's about 70 cents up from where we are. Um, that's kind of in the 10 minute chart. If I had other time frames up, I'd have different ones, I'm sure. So uh, this is the leg B. Remember, you have to wait for the whole bar to conclude before you can do anything about it. Okay, so let's just do this. Um, how about Tesla? You want to see? Oh, uh, DKC, are you looking at the same thing with Tesla? Sure, I'll do. In fact, I love doing this. T-S-L-A. So this is really important. Um, I, let me do the, I'll, I'll do the, hmm, I have to find the low. You always have to go back to find the, the exact low to see whether or not you got the count right, because sometimes you start doing it and you, you pick the wrong low and you move it an inch to the left and you say, oh, that's the low, I've, got, I've miscounted the waves, because that's your only obligation is to get the right sequence, A, B, C, D, this is Tesla trading at 259.87, up 46 cents after gapping down. Now you've got another buy mode right there. That's the low. Look how important this 200 period moving average. You could use this 200 period moving average to say, hey, I don't know about Tesla. I'm going to have to wait because until it breaks down away from it below or away, it breaks up to the upside, that magnet of the 200 period moving average is phenomenal. Well, look what we've got. We've got peak A, and then remember, you've got to count every peak. This A is a little bit lower uh, than the other one. So here's another A. That's a fraction higher. There's your B. Oops. There's your C. So that B is underneath that one. I have to double check. This is what I, I don't like about it because I have to look at it so closely. Um, yeah, okay. So that's A. That's B. Oh, that's the same. No, that is I'm correct. Even with that mini, what, 261.60, 261.60. No, it's not. So then I have to do this. I have to say A, 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 B. And here comes the question. Is this a C or is this a continuation of the previous one where I co co consider that it's really an E? Uh, can I call that an E? Yes, I can. So because, no, I can't. I have to treat this as a C. And then I, this is what I've done for quite a long time now. I'm quite prepared to say that if it fails with all the technicals failing, I've got to be really careful because that could be a peak C1 and just fractionally below it is the C2. I can't do this. I can't go back and say this is what I would have done because you've got to do it in real time. So I'm keeping this as a C. And the nine is still over the 14, so the position is still on A, B, and then this becomes a D because I've kept up that C, even though the B is underneath it. So that goes D, E, and there's an F. And that's a major turnaround. Look, the MACD turns around, stochastic, everything turns around sharply. So you get a down arrow. All right. And now we're starting a new move uh, with the dreaded H pattern right here. Look, failed miserably, right? Gap down sharply. And that says <clears throat> that this 200 period moving average is back in vogue. It's really important. And that's a 261.91. So I have to call this a gray A. Why is it gray? Because I'll explain in a moment. A gray A, a gray B. And your only thing now is how is it going to reverse 
and is going to be sharp when it makes that peak B because the MACD hasn't turned up. The nine period is still under the 14 period moving average. The stochastic is running really nicely. It's at 63 percent, but it's not at 80. So this just says be a little careful if you are trading it, but it has filled the gap. That's the first step. The second step is how many bars can it hold above the gap, the bar that gap down that low? How many bars can it hold above it? And can in the interim period, the nine period moving average move positive to go green and the MACD turn green? And then it's eliminated that gap down opening and said, hey, I, I'm still at least at this particular phase, I'm still showing strength. I'd actually like to look at a half hour chart to see exactly what it's doing. Hope that helps you. So let's uh, I, I need to finish all the other stuff that I was doing. Uh, so, oh, uh, and I, I, I was, oh, how about Tesla? So I did test the, I'll be back. Yeah. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN Education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we're looking at Tesla, and I'm not sure. Uh, did, I, uh, did I get a question about that? Uh, thanks. Yes. Okay. So D DKC. So uh, I just wanted to show you here the Tesla. Look how important this 200-period moving average is. In the one minute, uh, and this is what I was talking about, that peak C1, C2. I used that right here, and I think it's absolutely legitimate to do that because then it did go negative. This is the one-minute chart while it was filling the gap. 
And then I saw a new buy mode because the MACD was good. Look at the V-shaped pattern in both the on-balance volume and stochastic in the one-minute chart. Went into peak A. And under it is just a little bit of an, an A there and then a B. And then it goes to a C. And now I've got it as a D. At a D, you've got to be a little bit careful, just like the Dow. This is what I'm talking about. That is, I'm taking my time here because as far as I'm concerned, we're in a consolidation phase. The Dow made a peak D. It's going to digest these gains. Uh, it's going to take a little time. Uh, the weekly charts are still very good. So I, I And the other thing is I spoke about that in a bear phase, you get this massive 50 to 60 point S&P decline. The Dow's down way, three, 380 to 425. And then it tries to run in phase. It closes at the low of the day. The next day and overnight, the overseas start to sell. But then there's a little bit of a buy. And again, the, the market tries to run and it fails and it closes way down for the second session. And then the third session is even the same thing. That's bear market material. This is like mini bear market. That's why it's just a daily. I haven't even got a sell signal yet in the Dow uh, daily uh, or the S&P or the Qs. So this to me is a digestive phase. It's really important. But I think that the rotation that we've seen in different like the semiconductors were weak for a couple of days. We'll see if they can hold up or whether they're going to come back. Okay, I wanted to get that out the way. The AI stocks, the artificial intelligence stocks, taking quite quite a bit of a hit. I think that's really important, some of them, that is. Now, so this is what I wanted to show you. So now you fill the gap. You've stopped dead at the 200-period moving average in the 10-minute chart in Tesla. But wait a minute. This is what I'm talking about. Here is the daily chart of Tesla. You went to a leg E with a sharp re re reversal yesterday of hitting 20, uh, 276.99, one penny away from a round number high. Well, look at the green candle today. And that tells you that the, the distance between the 9 and the 14 is so powerful, it says that there's residual strength. It's not yet the opposite where you're seeing internal weakness, but yeah, you're seeing internal strength. Very little internal weakness. And the MACD has turned down, but it's still very strong. Stochastic's turned down, but it's still at 90%. The on-balance volume gave you that M-shaped pattern, shows you it's a tad weaker on the right, but it's not a big deal. And look at the monthly candle with a chance of a, a doji candle coming in Friday. <clears throat> and if by next week, all of next week, we haven't taken out 278. That's not just the 270. Uh, seven high that we, we saw, missed by a penny, uh, but we haven't taken it out. Instead, we stuck in that range. It says, hey, Tesla's now due for a bit of a break. It's had a spectacular move going from the one, the 150s all the way to the 270s. I mean, that is, that's a move that deserves some kind of a breather. And that's what I'm looking at. So I wanted to go through that. Where would Tesla start to break down to that green nine period moving average closes pink under the 14 moving average. Oh, I'd say in the 227 area, 232. I'm being gentle here because it should actually be lower than that. So it's either time or price or a combination. And at this particular point, the price is holding extremely well. This is a process, remember. So, okay, that's Tesla. The question came in about Uber. Let's do Uber. I love the action of Uber. <laughs> I looked at it. Two, three days ago, and I said, oh, I told subscribers, we want to buy, there are th three or four stocks that is on our longer term buy list. And Uber, having gone from that 40 area down, to, I, I really wanted the 36 to 35 area. It went to 3707 on the 31st of May. I thought maybe it, after the gap, if it fills the gap and then pulls back, we'll get one more decline. I think Uber's looking fabulous. So, if I, I, I know a um, person who asked me about it, I believe you are in Uber already. It would be an add to position. In this environment, would I add right here? I, I know that usually we look at starting a position, just getting in when you, when you observe it and you like it and saying, look, I'm in and now I'm going to start preparing to add to it. So if you're already in it, and I think you are, it's real tough. I would split. I love the action right now. It's up 84 cents at 43.50. If you're already in the position, I don't want you to add to it because if it pulls back, now you've got an average cost 
lower than if you had taken your patients and, and said, I'm going to wait for the under 40 at this particular level. In your case, I'm going to say it's something different. I'm going to say add to it right here at 43.52. But whatever you're going to add, make it a smaller position of whatever you were going to add. And the reason being, this little add-on can give you a point or so. And as a trading position, you can raise your stop and see where it takes you out. And if it does take you out, it's great. You've added to your position. But to have a full position when we are in the process, I think by this time next week, Thursday of next week, I think there's a chance that we've started the bigger move to the downside. And I don't mean a big, massive crash. I mean, just this whole digester phase, uh, the nine period moving average has started to get closer to the 14 and in the key indices, and it might even turn down to pink. That's the way I'm looking at it. But in this case, Uber being a leader, it means that fund managers are saying, what's working right now? What's not working? Let's go for what's working. I've changed my mind. I said, you just start a small position. I'm going to say, whatever you were going to add, split the position and get an add on right now. If you aren't in Uber at all, it's a very different thing. I'm going to say to you, if the question was start a position, I'm going to say, now you have to start, you can start a small position at 43.59. This position has to have a wider stop. I'd make the stop all the way to 41.50. That's a two points, that's a 5% stop on this just for the moment and then see what happens. Why? Because leadership remains leadership, especially in conditions that are really mixed like this. And you've seen that in, in just a few areas. Uh, what was the area that I want you to look at? E? E? Oh, now I can't think of it. What was that beauty stock? Not Ulta Beauty, but the one I've been talking about. E-R-Y? Oh, E-R-Y? No, definitely not E-R-Y. E, E, oh, I'm, I, I won't remember it at this point. I had it written down. I can't find it right now. I um, can't even remember the name of it. Anyway, it's it's been leading and it, you know, making new highs, and that's what you want to be looking Oh, uh, incidentally, I wrote this down. Coincidentally, talking about new highs, I wrote down a bunch of medical equipment stocks. Look at this. BSX, Boston Scientific Core Medical Instruments, um, within pennies of a new all-time high. Um, that's the way you want to look at it. It made this big spike to the upside. There's a possible E slash B alternate account, but it really looks like B. Look at that price is way above the 9 over the 14. This is what you want to be looking at. So, yes, um, I, I, I just say to you, stocks that are on the new high list tend to stay there for quite a while. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman Dow slipped is now down 31. S&P is up 2. We'll be see we'll see what happened to Apple over there at that 200 period moving average. Apple is right there. Oh, it's holding quite nicely. It's stalled a little bit. The guy's gone sideways at PT. I'll be right back. Down to 30. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. 
Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I should mention tomorrow I'm doing my show 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Um, early edition will be replayed at... Uh, um, 10 o'clock. So we were looking at Tesla made that peak D in the one minute chart pulling back. And then I said to you, look how important the 200 period moving average is. Look, there it's pulling back. Hey, thank you, Pat. I, 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 can't, I just could, could not remember at all the symbol for this ELF Beauty Inc. Cosmetics ELF. I, now I'm going to remember the ELF to give you beauty. And look at this, new stocks that make new highs tend to continue making new highs until something major changes. We saw that in Ultra Beauty, and I said ELF has taken over. Here it is, peak C1, C2 says the technicals are still, this is what I mean. Look at the, the 9 way over the 14. MACD comes down, but look, it's that 9 over the 14 that really counts. What happens is it pops up and goes to that leg D, uh, maybe a peak D if today doesn't see a higher high above yesterday's one. 13.38 high. Always like to look for round numbers. Oops. Yesterday there was an open of 107.00. I'm going to keep that in mind. Uh, and today's high is 113.33. And that is, of course, <laughs> six cents away from taking out yesterday's high. Um, so there's going to be something to watch. So that 107 level is going to be did I say 107? Yeah, 107 round number. If there is a decline at any, if there's no new high, and at any point, ELF starts to trade on a weekly basis below 103, that's only nine points away. Anything can happen to go down 103, so down to 103. Um, then that 107 kicks in. That's the way I use round numbers. But at this point, it's just irrelevant because it's, 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 um, it hasn't made a high yet because of yesterday's level that 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 hasn't been taken out so this might make a peak d but i'm just saying to you this is the reason why for subscribers from opening call um yes we did add a long position which is doing quite nicely because i'm it made a peak b i'm expecting it to go to a c and indeed it doesn't have to be much higher but i wanted to be in the areas that seem to be working um and that were showing the resilience that you want in this particular market so, and we've taken lots of profits of different positions because I want to raise cash for this particular move uh, that I'm thinking is going to be a consolidation phase. So, uh, yes, yeah, so Alpha was the one I was looking at. So, in the den, we had someone who was in the utility area uh, for 40 plus years, and he's been looking at a whole bunch of stocks. I'm going to, I've followed this for not years but not just decades, but for many, many decades. And that Duke utility, of course, I haven't got it notated. I always have it notated. I lost the notation on this. It doesn't matter. It takes me a second. He has the monthly chart. And this is one. And the, I, I'm only putting it in here. I haven't read the full. Uh, he wrote a, a kind of a, a synopsis of what he's looking at. Um, it's actually more like a thesis. It's, it's very detailed. I like it very much. But... Um, and I'm not yet sure what the reason was, 
why he chose these particular ones, mostly because they do have dividends, but I'm not sure quite what the other reason is. So this is Duke Utilities, Duke Energy uh, ut Electric Utility. So it's making this H pattern. It had a high somewhere in the 100, and I'm calling it 116 area, pulls all the way back to the 86s, and then bounces all the way to about 107. Now it's trading at 90. And look, here's the weekly chart, peak A, peak B, peak C. I can't tell you how many times I've looked at peak Cs that have uh, failed and taken out the left side low in this particular series of moves in weekly charts over the, the last year. Uh, so the A, B, C, it hasn't got a C minus yet. Why? Because it hasn't taken out the starting point low in the 83s. Now, this has to get an A, even though the next one is lower, that becomes a B, and there's another peak C that's starting to fail. And here's another A. And all of these is because this is your starting point. Remember, you start counting from the low, the major low. All of this, you've got to count each successively higher peak. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, yeah, I agree. I, th I think you mentioned that he's not sure what they can do, but he's got them on, on his list. I think it's kind of a watch list. He has your A, B, C, and a very quick A to B to C to D. I don't like that. That usually says you've got to look at the distance of all these peaks, and yet it hasn't even gone close to the high that was made. That little peak over there uh, that was in May at about 93-something, all it did was go to the 92-91 area, <clears throat> and now it's pulling back. And the nine-period moving average has just flipped negative. So, yeah, I, I'm looking at this, and I looked at these utilities I, I haven't notated them for a while, but I do notate the I, uh, the XLU, which I haven't updated this for a while either. No, I lost all the data. You know, what happens is when my system shuts down suddenly, uh, the, the notation's there, but in the library, it comes back to a different series of notations that I've done because it, it, it always limited. It used to be terrible I've, I've managed to sort it out a little bit better now. It's not trade stations fault, although I would say it's trade stations fault in the sense that they, as I'm doing all this, it should memorize it. It should just put it into memory right away, and then I'll never have a problem. Because when it comes back after I, um, after if it shuts down, and then I haven't saved the very last thing, like now, if it just said there's a lightning strike or the wind or whatever it is, and it pulls down or it closes down, uh, then I tend to lose that data. It doesn't take me long. It took me a second here just to do it. S&P Select Utility. Uh, this is the S&P Select Utility Utility ETF. All right? So it's got the same pattern, peak A, peak B. This went to a C, and now it's pulling back. No, 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 that's it. Peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. It looks the same. And it's got the H that goes to a low case information. I know what you mean. And one of the things I'm looking at here is how is the grid going to manage everything? Well, you know, innovation makes a really big difference. And at some point, oh, this is the dividend, 4.4%. Yeah. Okay. So this, this particular one, uh, uh, Duke Energy, has a 4.4%. Um, no, I've got battery backup. I've got everything. Believe me. I've got, I've got everything. It's not that. It's the suddenness with which it should. Okay, well, uh, it did happen while I was out of town. That means I had to have somebody come back and just press the button. That's all they had to do to start the, uh, the computer up again because that's the only thing I can't do remotely. Uh, you have to have somebody physically press the button. Um, so, yeah. So, in the meantime, what I am looking at is – in the energy area, because innovation is going to make the change, at some point someone will improve the battery or do something that makes it batteryless or whatever it is to get energy, that'll happen. But it doesn't happen in a day, it doesn't happen in a month, it doesn't happen in a year. It takes a process. And remember, I spoke about this. Some of you do remember that. It was way back in 2000, and I went with my good friend, to the auto show in Boston when they still used to have it. I had been going every year for decades. Um, I, I just love car design. I've always been fascinated. I don't have to have the fanciest car. I just want something that goes very nicely from A to B and I, A, A to Z. Let's put it that way. And I like to make the stops. If I have a car that goes really quickly, 
I tend to drive very quickly. I'm just, that's the way it is. So uh, I said to him, he said, oh, it'll be all electric in another 10 years. I said, no, 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 Julius. It takes 50 years always to get to where you start and you press the button and everybody can do it. And the infrastructure has already taken 20 years since the Prius. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF nn.com You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Oh, folks, if I didn't see your email, I still haven't been able to figure out. I'm now getting 70. I never got junk mail. I hardly got any junk mail on both my, uh, all three of my different uh, addresses. And I had to update and, and all sorts of things. And now I'm getting 70 a day. I, it's just horrible. Anyway, so Pan, yes, Rochelle, P-A-N-W, Palo Alto, this is one of the best of the best, all-time high, uh, in the, and that's what I'm saying, all stocks that go to all-time highs tend to stay there for a while, leg E in the daily, leg D in the weekly, and I don't know, I'll do this tomorrow if someone reminds me, G slash A in the monthly chart, uh, or it could be an alternate, no, it's not an alternate candle, oh, but it's fantastic looking, so Hack is not doing quite the same thing, that's the ETF. Um, it's at a peak F. It looks like the other charts that have made DEs and Fs at this recent high four days ago. And I, we're consolidating. There's just no question about it. Why have we taken a lot of cash? Um, we, just it's, it's really important to have some cash ready for stocks that you've missed that you really want to get into. Um, and that's, I think, the way it is. So cautiousness is the watchword. I, I don't think the Dow is going to take out the recent high until we consolidate a little bit further. Uh, meantime, back at the ranch, the SMH is trying to rally. The SMH is a semiconductor index. 
155.94 made a high four days ago. Um, and it's it's not breaking down. The nine is still over the 14. I've got to respect that. It's a process. And today we saw that there was uh, internal strength. And now it's reverting back to the weakness that we saw uh, early in the morning. Um, I, as I say, this is where you've got to be cautious. But if you are in stocks that are making new all-time highs or even recent highs and are holding well here, those are the ones you want to keep your eye on because on the next uh, if the pullback continues now into next week, which I think it's going to do, that means those are the stocks that you want to either add to or get into because they are showing the strength that fund managers are utilizing to make, get their positions. Have a great day. Stay tuned for Steve Rhodes and great programming here. I'll be back tomorrow at 8. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. Basil Chapman signing up. Thank you for being here.